20 to 30 years. It wasn't something that happened overnight. And it was, it started out with my dream that I wanted to be a lawyer. And that was since I was a little girl. But I didn't think it was possible. Like, I'm, I'm a girl, I went to Beit Yaakov, and I wanted to marry a Hasidic boy. I didn't think it was possible. So, in the beginning, I was a maskira, I was a secretary for lawyers. And I was very happy, and I was getting always a better job, and a better job, and more money. And then I got married, and I wanted my husband to sit in kolel, little mode. That's right. And I was happy. Everything was wonderful. And then my husband decided to go to college, and I worked, and he went to Toro. And by his graduation, in my heart, I started to feel, now it's my turn, now it's my turn. Maybe I could do it, maybe I could do it. And I said, you know, I'll never know if I could do it if I don't try. I have to try. I didn't want to give up anything. I wanted to be a good mother, I wanted to be a good wife. I didn't want to compromise. So I did it very slowly. Ten years in school. And then I was thinking, who's even going to come to me, a lady, you know, a Hasid, Hasidish, and I didn't know. But, you know, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he runs the world. And my first clients were Satmar, in Kiryat Yoel. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he runs the world, and if Hashem wants something to happen, it's going to happen. Because I had so many people telling me, going to law school, a Hasidish, a lady, Who's going to come to you? I said, it doesn't matter. Even if I have not one client, I need to know that I tried. So Baruch Hashem, I opened up my law office, and all my clients were Hasidim. Sometimes Rabbanim would call me, they had questions. So I had a very good relationship with everybody, and I was very happy. My uncle was a chauffeur. He was a chauffeur for over 20 years, and he just retired. So for many years, I used to go to his courtroom. I used to watch him. I used to learn. I loved it. It was a great experience. And I always told him, you know, one day I would love to be a judge. It was like a chalom. It was a dream. And then when he retired, so he said to me, Ruchi, if you want to be a judge, now's your chance. To become a judge, you have to have a campaign and an election. There were a few, few judges that get picked, appointment by the mayor, but the Hamon, the majority, you have to have an election. And when my uncle retired, the seat opened up. Usually, this seat goes to Haredi. It's, the, it's known in the court, this is the orthodox seat. I ran what's called anti-establishment. I went against the party. Because originally, when I wanted to run, I went to the Democratic Party leaders and I met with them. And they liked me. They thought that, they thought that I would be a good candidate. But then they heard that a Hasidic woman can't win in Borough Park. So I looked at him, straight in the eye, and I said to him, Judge, if God wants me to win, I am going to win. So we laugh. He said, you know, I think you'll make a good judge. But the Democratic Party didn't support me because they, would, they thought for sure I wouldn't be able to win. And then even the establishment here in Borough Park, like the Ishi vote that sent home letters, they also didn't want to support me because they may like me as a person. They didn't think that I would win. Officially, a judge has to have the agenda, I'm going to be fair. Right? I'm going to be fair and I want to follow the law. It's different than other politicians who will say, I'll, you know, I'll bring this for the community. The judge can only just say, I'm going to be fair. But what means fear? What's your sense of fairness? What's your sense of justice? It's who you are as a person. Like, what's your background? Where are you from? And that's really why they, the system wants to have judges that understand different communities. Because I'll understand my community. So when I'm judging and people come before me, I will understand the background and why they do things a certain way. I've always tried to be like, some people call me like an ambassador. Every day I daven, when I daven, I always have in mind that I should be able to make a Kiddush Hashem and, and be like the Or Lagoyim. Because I feel that there's a lot of misunderstanding. A lot of people don't understand the Haredi world. And if you don't understand, and you don't ask questions, then you make assumptions. And usually the assumptions are wrong. 
and they'll always think that women are oppressed, women don't have opportunity, and I, and I think it's not true. I think it's not true. I think if a man doesn't let his wife study, it's not really the religion. It's his own personality disorder, I think. <laughs> I think that, I mean, I, Baruch Hashem, very lucky. My husband is a big Talmud Chacham, and he's very confident in himself. He has, he has no problem. He's proud of me. He's proud of me. The word feminist is a tricky word, okay? Uh, it's a tricky word. I'll tell you why. Here, here in my neighborhood, when people hear the word, the word feminist, they think, oh, this is a woman. She wants to have an aliyah, the Shkret Torah. She wants to wear a talit. She, no, that's not me. I am very, very happy with my role as a woman of Pihat Torah. Exactly the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu created me as a woman. Right. So I'm not, I'm very happy when the Shabbat comes. I like the Nerot. My husband goes to shul. He wears the talis. He makes the Kiddush. I do my mitzvot. He does his mitzvot. And I'm not fighting to do the mitzvot of a man. My, my main point that I want to bring out is that not only could a woman do it, but you could do it and be religious, be chassidish, and not compromise your standards. Don't let go. If this is your, if this is your halacha, if this is your mesora, stick to it. Because if you are, if you stick to it, people will respect you. So, for example, I'll give you an example: shaking hands with men. I know that there are many men who shake hands with women, many women who shake hands with men who are religious. But this is one chumra that I felt was important for me, and I felt it makes a line. I have to make that line for myself. So I found in my experience that I only got respect for it. So things that maybe people are embarrassed, I'm embarrassed, don't be embarrassed. Say, I'm religious, this is part of my, this is part of my custom. I, I, I respect you, but please respect me. I will not shake your hands. And if you're proud of who you are and you explain to people, they'll respect you. 